Hello, let's talk about protecting Windows clients with Defender for Endpoint. I want to begin by talking a little bit about what Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is because that's probably quite important for us to agree on before we go much further. I'll also touch on what Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is not because that's probably quite important too. Once we're all on the same page with Defender for Endpoint, we'll jump into some lab work and we'll do a little bit of something called onboarding. Onboarding is the term we use when we configure a Windows device to be protected by Defender for Endpoint. We can't use the term enrolling because that's reserved for Intune or MDMs. We can't use join because that's an enter ID thing. And we can't use register because that's also an enter ID thing. Anyway, the point is that I use the term onboarding deliberately. Okay, so what is Defender for Endpoint? Well, Microsoft say that it's an enterprise endpoint security platform designed to help enterprise networks prevent, detect, investigate, and respond to advanced threats. That's great, but don't we already have Microsoft Defender installed on all of our Windows computers anyway? Well, yes, here we do. And on all Windows 10 and 11 devices, you'll have a feature called Microsoft Defender installed right out of the box. And this feature's full title is called Microsoft Defender Antivirus, and it's an antivirus and anti-malware product. This is different from Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, and in fact, you don't even need Defender Antivirus running on your machine in order to use Defender for Endpoint. You can be using any other antivirus or anti-malware product. If you do choose to use Defender, Defender Antivirus alongside Defender for Endpoint, you'll get the full capability of the Defender for Endpoint solution, which we'll touch on in a little while. So how do we license Defender for Endpoint then? Well, for this topic, I'm going to head to m365maps.com. So we'll head to m365maps.com. And here we have a section here called Defender, Microsoft Defender. So we have Defender Business, Defender Endpoint, Office 365 servers, Cloud Security Posture Management, and Vulnerability Management. We're looking at Defender for Endpoint for this particular section. So we'll choose that. And you can see we have two plans. We have Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 and Defender for Endpoint Plan 2. Well, there is Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 and Plan 2, but if we go back one, you can see we've got this Defender for Business, which actually includes, if you were to read all of these things, it, it's kind of a mix of Plan 1 and Plan 2. Not quite as good as Plan 2, but not quite as, as limited as Plan 1. And it's designed for organizations that have fewer than uh, 300 users. So let's go back to Defender for Endpoint in this bit here. And let's see how these compare. So firstly, an easy one. We've got seven core features. Seven? That's more than seven. Ten. Ten core features within Defender for Endpoint Plan 1. And we'll start with Block at First Sight because it's top left. That's where you usually start. It's a machine learning based feature that enables Defender for Endpoint to detect malware that's not previously been discovered or analyzed. It's an ad kind of an advanced feature because when you compare it to traditional signature based antivirus and anti malware tools, they need to be specifically told which files are bad via a definition definition update every few hours. This will figure it out based on what the file looks like or tries to do. So next we have centralized management and that's an easy one. We can centrally manage Defender for Endpoint through the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. Okay, cross-platform support. Well, great, Defender for Endpoint supports all the major platforms such as Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS, and Linux actually. And that's great, but we're covering Defender for Endpoint for Windows devices in this particular video. Next, let's look at, uh, well, Defender, Defender for Cloud Apps integration. There's a feature called Defender for Cloud Apps that you get access to with the higher level plans in uh, Microsoft 365 Defender, and that allows you to protect your cloud apps by limiting what people can do and what they can see and what they can upload. And, and Defender for Endpoint will integrate with that, even in the Plan 1 feature, to f send up information about what clients are doing on their particular websites. Next, Enhanced ASR, Attack Service Reduction. I'm going to go into the attack service reduction capabilities in more depth later, so we'll jump on to manual response actions. Now, we can use manual response actions to take action against a machine 
from the portal. And this makes sense when compared to the automated investigation response feature that you'll get in plan two. With plan one, the admin needs to manually take action. With plan two, you can use automation rules to take that action even when you're not around. Next, mobile threat defense. So this really is only applicable to mobile devices, iOS, Android, and that will allow you to use Defender for Endpoint to protect those mobile devices. Next generation protection, a little bit woolly. It's better than antivirus and anti-malware. It's, it's the next generation of protection. And tamper protection, which as you can imagine in the security space is quite important. We need to make sure that your security tool that you're relying on for the security of your devices can't be tampered with or turned off. And that's what this feature does. It You'd hope it would be there in every version of a security product. And it is in plan one, but it's obviously not in Defender Antivirus. An attacker can just turn Defender Antivirus off before they start attacking your machine. Doesn't sound great. Finally, in plan one, we've got web content filtering. And this is very basic. It's a very basic category-based web filtering solution that you can you can block specific categories of websites and you can specify which categories people are allowed to browse to. So that's plan one. And I just want to highlight one of the main important differences that you'll see between plan one and plan two, and that's automation. We get automated investigations as part of Defender for Endpoint plan two, and that's where Defender for Endpoint will leverage 365 Defender as a whole to actively investigate and alert. This turns a single data point or a single alert into an understandable story by linking the intelligence from all of the areas of Defender, such as Office 365, SharePoint teams, and bringing all of it together with the endpoint information itself from Defender for Endpoint. So for example, if the endpoint detects a malware in a file, automated investigations will see where that file exists. Did it come in from an email or SharePoint who else in the organization received it? And following that, it can even remove that attachment from other user mailboxes proactively. That's quite a job if you're trying to do that yourself as an administrator. Finally, Defender for Endpoint has Endpoint Detection and Response. This is a feature that will be doing the actual detection of malware in the file that I just talked about. Okay, so if that's plan one and plan two, let's have a quick look at what Defender for Endpoint for Business, Defender for Business, is all about. We'll go back to Defender for Business. You can see we have automated investigations. That's the biggie. That's that's huge. We've got endpoint detection and response. That's one of the main features of Plan 2. We have block at first sight. We have mobile threat defense. We have enhanced ASR. We have tamper protection. Pretty much all the features that you would hope to get from Plan 2 are available in business. So if you have less than 300 users, Defender for Business is an absolutely valuable license to go and grab. Now, I hope that's given you a good overview of the difference between Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 and Plan 2, and even Defender for Business. In fact, I was putting this video together in preparation for my upcoming live course on the Alpine Shield Academy called Mastering Defender for Endpoint. In that course, I'm walking you through every step needed to get Defender for Endpoint up and running. And actually using this code here, you can get 50% off your first year of Academy access. So on to the configuration. Firstly, we need to check the licenses. Now you can see I've got the licenses right in front of me. I need Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 or Plan 2. What does that look like when it comes to my portal? So I've got the M365 admin center right here. We'll head back to home and I'll show you where we go. So it's in billing, down to your products. There's loads of different ways to get access to this, but let's go to your products. You can see right now I'm using Defend, uh, the developer trial, which if you have access to that, fantastic. It's a great feature. Unfortunately, it doesn't include Windows, so it doesn't include Defender for Endpoint. So I couldn't use that on its own. But we do have this thing here, Defender for Endpoint P2 trial. So I'm using P2, I'm using the trial version. So we'll go into that and you can see that I've assigned 10 licenses of it. And if we go into licenses, back into P2, that's who is assigned the licenses. Now, it's important that you have your users license for Defender for Endpoint, as well as your admins, because the admins need access to the portal in order to make changes and review the security of these devices. And so if we head over to the portal itself at security.microsoft.com, you can see we've got 
access to, enti to the entire Microsoft 365 Defender suite. We do need to enable Defender for Endpoint, and I've not done any of this so far, so let's start right now. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Now, if your portal doesn't look like this, and you can see I've scrolled all the way down, and on the left-hand side, all of these connectors and all these little features, so exposure management, assets, endpoints, identity, if they aren't there, you're going to need to just click into a couple of these different features. So click into uh, incidents and alerts, click into to some of these, and it'll start building this portal for you. Presumably, you've already started using security.microsoft.com, but if you haven't, you do need to load it by just getting it, uh, just browsing through it a little bit, and it'll start building that portal for you. And then all of these other buttons will arrive. So assets, for example, we've got a button for devices, which is not there when you start using this. So just be aware of that. I'm going to click into devices. You can see I've got no devices. I've done no onboarding just yet. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you have settings. And in settings, we also have this endpoints button, which is very important. If you don't have that, wait for it to arrive. It can take up to a day once you've started using this portal. So we click on endpoints and this is where we can f start configuring some of the features of, of defender for endpoint and firstly on the right hand side this is where we need to go through and we will configure these much more of these in the course uh in the live course but i want to show you the the most important one to get these devices enrolled with defender for endpoint the first thing we can do really is enable intune integration where is it intune connection right here we'll enable that and save the preferences. That's the first thing we need to do, right? So the, there's a there's two sides to the Intune connection. We need to enable it this side and also go over to Intune. So if I go to intune.microsoft.com, and then into Endpoint Security, you can see it's generating Windows devices on border to Defender for Endpoint report. There are none, so that won't take long. And then we've got this Defender for Endpoint connector status. Now, I haven't done anything on the Intune side to get Defender for Endpoint configured. So if I was to click on Navigate here, it would take you, as you can see on the bottom left, it will take you over to the security portal. We don't need to go there. I need to configure it on the Intune side for now. So I'm going to scroll down, and we have set up Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And when this loads, you can see the connection status is available. And this is available because it's been enabled on the Defender for Endpoint side. Otherwise, it would say not available. And if I scroll down, you can see we've got some settings. So this first one seems like an obvious question. Do you want to allow Defender for Endpoint to enhance endpoint security configurations? And you might. That might be something you want to do. But in my case, that's not something I'm going to be demonstrating. Defend for Endpoint can enforce these security configurations itself without needing Intune. And what I'm going to demonstrate in this video is using Intune to enforce Defender for Endpoint security configuration. So I'm going to leave that as off. You definitely don't need to turn this on to use Defender for Endpoint with Intune, and I'll show you that soon. So we'll leave that turned off. And scroll down, you can see we have some compliance evaluation. So if I want to just focus on Windows devices, we can use Defender for Endpoint to give compliance status up to Intune. So if the device is unhealthy and Defender for Endpoint knows that, then it can tell Intune, which is fantastic. So we'll turn that on. And then scroll a bit further down, you can see we've got uh, the ability to connect app protection policies for Defender for Endpoint for iOS and Android. We're not doing that just yet. Okay, so that's pretty much done. We're just going to choose Save, and we're all ready to go. Now, I mentioned that we would do some onboarding with our devices, so let's go ahead and do that. If we scroll up on this left-hand side, we have Endpoint Detection and Response, and it says the, end, the Defender for Endpoint Connector is enabled, which is good, and the onboarding status, you can see we haven't got any onboarded devices yet because we haven't done that bit. So back into Summary, scroll down, we can create an Endpoint Detection and Response policy. Now, I personally think this is a weird portal view because this isn't just about configuring EDR. This is about onboarding your device to Defender for Endpoint via Intune. Because when I choose Create Policy, and it asks, I love the naming, it says we can create a profile. I've just clicked Create Policy, and the, the window is Create Profile. Let's gloss over that. Words matter, but let's gloss over that. We're going to choose Platform as Windows 10 
Windows 11 and Windows Server and not the Config Manager one because we're doing Intune for now. And we scroll on this list, we have a def EDR, Endpoint Detect and Response. We'll click that and choose Create. Now, I'm going to call it Onboard Defender for Endpoint. And then we'll choose Next. And in this section, we have it's all about Defender for Endpoint, right? That's 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 all we're talking about here. And we can configure the Defender for Endpoint client configuration package. So we can use Auto from Connector. And this connector is only available because I've done that Intune configuration between Defender for Endpoint and Intune. If we hadn't done that, it wouldn't say Auto from Connector because there wouldn't be a connector. So we'll, leave, we'll, we'll, we'll use that. Alternatively, you could choose Onboard and you could give it the device string that you want. And then you could also do offboarding if you have that string. But I'm going to choose auto from connector and it's got this onboarding blob from the connector itself. Next, sample sharing. We can either leave it as not configured, in which case it sends all, or we can say none. Now, in this case, I'm going to go with all default, but it doesn't really matter. And then this deprecated telemetry reporting frequency, it's already using uh, expedited from now on. So we don't need to worry about using... Um, setting a, a telemetry reporting frequency because it's already using the one that is default that's why it's deprecated so we'll choose next and i'm not going to be using scope tags in this particular video because there's no need i've got that many devices in fact i've got none for now so we'll choose next and then assignments now i need to specify a group name unfortunately so i can't just specify individual devices and for this demonstration i'm actually going to go with all devices and it will deploy Defender for Endpoint's profile, which will be the onboarding package to these devices. And it's all devices, but there are no devices in this tenant just yet. I'm gonna to need to do that in a short while. So include all devices. In your pilot configuration, it's much more likely that you create a group and then deploy it to the group. You don't wanna be deploying it to all devices as a test, certainly not, obviously. So we'll choose next. And that's what we've got configured. Now you'll notice I only had to do one thing, just specify where it's connecting, where it's getting this onboarding information from. And that's not really what I would say is anything to do with endpoint detection and response, but never mind. There we go. Let's choose save. And this isn't going to be doing much on my tenant because I've got no devices in it at all. So we won't jump over and see what happens on the device because it isn't there yet. In the meantime, let's take a look at attack surface reduction rules. So over on the left hand side, we have attack surface reduction and in create policy, select platform windows 10 and later, you'll see we have these four options, app and browser isolation, exploit protection, web protection for the legacy edge and application control, Microsoft Defender application control. And then if we go into the config manager one, we have these versions for config manager, but otherwise exactly the same as the non-config manager version. And then on this one, Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows Server is where they've added in the things that are also applicable to Windows Server. So you should always look in here for the attack service reduction rules and device control. It's a weird way for it to, to be laid out, I think, but that's how it's, how it's laid out. So attack service reduction is actually sat in the bottom one, Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows Server. And we can go into that and choose create. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I need to go away and build these devices so that Defender for Endpoint gets uh, deployed to these devices and on these devices get onboarded to the portal. As I say, this is just me prepping some content for that live course that I'm building on the Alpenshield Academy. If you want to see more and more in-depth stuff and interact with me on this, grab your seat on that live course, especially as it's 50% off a whole year of access to the Academy. Obviously, you can catch all of these courses on demand, and we have a whole host of on-demand courses available already. Anyway, I will be back, and I'll drop some more content as I'm going through this course and building up some of the curriculum. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.